I know that God only lives in his own commandments. He lives in nothing else but his own commandments. He does not live in people's good ideas. He does not live in people's opinions and viewpoints. And he does not live in people's own desires. He lives in his own desires. That's why the Bible says, delight yourself in the Lord, and he will give you his desires. Meaning, his desires will start to burn in your heart. Many people have twisted that scripture and said, oh, delight yourself in the Lord, and he will give you everything you desire. Say to God, wrong doctrine. If you thought it was like that, you lived in a dream world. Listen, how easily, easily you can twist the scripture if you're not in the spirit. Delight yourself in the Lord, and he will give you what you desire. And you think, but I desire that, I want that. I desire that, I want that. The Bible says you do not have because you do not ask. And when you ask, you ask with selfish motive to spend whatever you ask on your own pleasures. Oh! And then later on you come to realize, hey, God didn't give me what I ask. And you say, oh, this thing is not working. I don't want to know what's wrong. I don't believe wrong. I don't do wrong. And you ask many questions. And now you are let into temptation. That's why Jesus said, pray like this. Father, lead us not into temptation. Now you are full of questions. And a question mark is a temptation. A question mark is a temptation to doubt. To waver. To go double-minded. You don't need one question mark in your life. Kick them all out. I'd have, I've got no question marks in my mind. I cast them out. I don't want them in my life. I believe and I trust and I make sure whatever I believe in is of God. Because if I believe in anything that is not of God, I will be disappointed. And disappointment is a big stumbling block to get over. The many disappointments that people get disappointed with they ask God the questions immediately. And you know what's amazing about Christians? When they're angry at God, they're angry at the pastor as well. They take it out on me. Do you know that? They do. And then I realize the mistakes they make. They say, yeah, but this happened and this happened. And that and that. And meaning they've seen the Lord there, there, there. Say to God, to ask, ask the Father. Lead me not into temptation. Prevent me, Lord, from entering into the temptation of being disappointed. Where does your disappointments come from? From your own preconceived idea and your own deception. God cannot disappoint you. Those who open the Lord will never be disappointed. Give him a hand. Those who open the Lord will never be disappointed. Give him a hand. <laughs> Ask the guy next to you, where is your hope? You see, your hope might be in your viewpoint. Your hope might be in your own idea. Your hope might be in your own desires. And now you ask the Lord for that because you have read that scripture and you heard a sermon Delight yourself in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart. You say, but God's going to give me this desire because he said, if I delight myself in him, he will give me my desires. If your desire is not from God, disappointment is waiting for you around the corner. Amen. And that is the problem with so many Christians. They get disappointment after disappointment after disappointment because they've never lined up their lives with God's word, with God's desires. So they live by their own viewpoint, their own opinion, their own preconceived idea, and they believe that the Lord should, should live in their viewpoints. God is not a compromiser, friend. You will not manipulate. You can even fast and pray. You can even fast He's not, he, you're not going to fit God into your box. He's too big to fit into your box. You are going to fit into his box. Give him a hand. <laughs> Say to God, you're going to fit into his box. Amen. You understand that? 
So that's why John the Baptist prayed this prayer. Lord, I must decrease and you must increase. In your life, the more you got of God in your life, the, the, the less chance there is for you to be disappointed. Because if you are full of Jesus, he is looking after his own. Give God a hand. God look after his own interest. He does not look after human interest. He look after his own interest because he knows his own interests produce life. But why will good God, does he not think about me? He knows that your interests lead to death and to nothing. And he's not going to invest in that. You cannot expect someone to put money on a losing horse. Now, don't gamble, please. But that's what they said in old days. Olden days, I never gambled. That you cannot expect anyone to put money on a losing horse. And your flesh is a losing horse. Your opinion is a losing horse. Your viewpoint is a losing horse. Your desires is a losing horse. Set your gun is to get the mind of Jesus. That is a winner. You can put not your money, but all your life in that. God's viewpoints. That's why. Who knows the will of the Lord? He who stands in his presence. Give him a hand. <laughs> who know the heart of the Lord? Those who stand in his counsel. Those who stand in his presence. They know the Lord's heart. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Pray, Lord Jesus. I want to live in your counsel. Stand in your counsel. Now, if we say standing in the counsel of the Lord, we don't mean um, you pray all day long and you don't come out of your room. Please, don't do that. You must work. You must not stay in your room in the counsel of the Lord because the Lord is not restricted to your room. I mean, take him to your workplace. <laughs> Invite him into your car. I mean, and live in his counsel. Give him a hand. Live in his counsel, move in his counsel, be active in his counsel, take time to pray, amen, hear his voice well while you, while you live. Those who are joined to the Lord is one in spirit with the Lord. It's not about locking you in your own room and park there and pray there all day long. Because your inner room is not a physical room, but it's in here in your heart. Twa, twa. Point to your heart. Say, here's my inner room. Jesus said, if you want to pray, enter into your inner room, lock the door behind you, cluck, cluck. And then, there, in your inner room, pray to your Father in heaven, who will reward you openly. When you pray in your inner room, your mouth is quiet, shook, shook. But you pray in the spirit, in here, no one knows. Satan doesn't know. He cannot, he does not know what is in your inner room. That's why one time I've been with TB Joshua and the people there at the prayer altar like this was praying all their prayers. And you know, TB Joshua warned them and said, hey, there's some of these things that you pray. You should not pray so openly about the enemy is hearing you. There's some things you do not reveal to the enemy. There's some prayers you pray in your inner room, you don't open your mouth. There's some things you need to pray in wisdom. The enemy is always listening in. When you go into your inner room, that's your spirit. No, don't speak about your mind. The devil can't know, know your mind. from nothing to know your mind. But when you go into your inner room and you're praying the spirit, he cannot know nothing what's going on there. Give Jesus a hand. When I say praying in the spirit, I don't speak about praying in tongues. I speak about going into your inner room. You pray in the spirit. Praying in the Spirit as many times not even praying with words, or it might be with words, but not in your mind, but in your spirit. You are praying not with your mouth. You are not even praying with your mind. You're praying with your spirit. In whatever language you are praying. 